Hi, this is Nick from Elite Outdoor Fitness and this video blog is about um, uh, multi-system taxing. Uh, and what I mean by that is when you're going out and setting yourself a race or a challenge or whatever, um, you should be having a training program that's put in place to allow you to be in not only all the components of physical fitness, but building economy, efficiency um, and uh, capacity on your body systems based on those components of physical fitness being, being hit. And what I mean by that is if you're a 1500 meter running trainers on the flat track, you're gonna be hitting certain areas of component physical fitness and, 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 and less in, the, in other areas. Whereas if you're doing a, a fell run or you're doing certainly Bergen work, you're gonna be kind of hitting maybe a few more of the components of physical fitness than you would be if you were just a track runner. In turn, more systems uh, potentially can be overwhelmed if you're running six hours over the hills of the Bergen than potentially can be overwhelmed uh, when you're doing a track 1500 meter run. And what happens? Well, if you overwhelm on a 1500 meter run and you go a little bit too fast out the gate, you can pull it back a little bit, rely on your VO2 max, and you probably recover quite well because there's less systems being taxed at a higher rate and you can probably recover from it and pull it out the bag. When you're doing a multidisciplined approach, it's not likely. What happens then? Well, if you imagine your systems and your body and the components of physical fitness kind of represented as like 100 jars of fluid, when you go from like a... Uh, zero to the end of the race, they are slowly building up and up and up. And as they start to overspill at the end, that's you when you're fully taxed out and you're redlining it and you finish the race. And it should be an increase in possibly place or, uh, um, pace or intensity um, or certainly heart rate during that so that you finish at the right level. That's the perfect pace race, isn't it? Most of us don't do that, especially in race conditions. And what actually happens with those is that some of those fluids or uh, components, physical fitness and, and, and systems get overtaxed and they overspill. And you'll recognize that and all of a sudden you'll go, shit, I'm going too hard. I've nailed that too hard. I've still got another hour left. Or I've still got another three miles left or five miles or whatever. And you pull back on your pace and it's too late. Some of the systems that get overtaxed won't recover, recover fully. They won't recover to the previous level. Some will recover fully, some won't. But the ones that have recovered well, you'll feel that and you'll feel a lot better, but they very quickly get overwhelmed again because of the ones that are holding them back that haven't recovered properly. And what I mean by that is you probably recognize it by going out and doing efficiency pace, nice 75 to 82% and you bound into the red line a bit or whatever, you pull back off the pace and after a while, your heart rate actually doesn't go back down to the recovery state as it should do normally. You might be working at 82%, 82%, and during a 10 mile run, it will slowly increase. But if you go a little bit too hard, about six, seven, eight, nine miles, probably won't come and recover because it's your sum systems being overtaxed. I hope this helps. If you need to, any other information, there's plenty of videos and audio blogs and stuff like that and information regarding all of this, especially the Bergen work and that. Uh, so come and become a member with Elite Outdoor Fitness. Thanks for listening.